Welcome to the Ancient Cookware channel, where on every episode, we show you different aspects of our products, such as how they are made, how to use, cure, and use our products, how to properly care for them, and even recipes which you can use to get the most out of our products. In this episode, we're going to show you how the black clay La Chamba pottery is made. For that, we have to go deep inside Colombia. But to get there, you first have to brave the traffic in Bogota, go over the Andes, travel the back roads of Colombia, until you get to the lazy banks of the Magdalena River. There, in a land that time almost forgot, there is an entire town that revolves around the production of the beautiful and famous black clay pottery of the region. The pots produced in this town are not just utilitarian, but almost works of art. And it all begins with the black clay found only in this region, which begins as dry chunks, which are ground up and laid in the sun to dry. When the powder is dry, it is then immersed in tubs of water to clean it and remove all impurities. With the clean clay, the back-breaking process of hand-mixing the clay begins. Repeatedly, the artisans have to knead the clay until it reaches the desired consistency. To begin the process, the artisans break off a piece of clay of an appropriate size for the ultimate piece he will work on. He then forms a clay ball and flattens it into a disc shape, continually flattening it until it reaches the size and thickness needed. The flattened pieces of clay are draped over the mold and slowly pressed onto the mold. The clay is then smoothed using water and spatulas, making sure to leave the outside as smooth as possible. Then the excess is eventually trimmed of the mold and the rim smoothed. After the clay is dry and the pieces have hardened, the artisans begin to smooth the surface further. Using successfully finer grained stone, which acts as sandpaper. The pieces are then ready for the handles. As in all steps in the process, artisans specialize in certain aspects of the pot. After they complete their task, the pieces are transported to the next artisan who continues on with the next task in production. Here, this artisan who specializes in handles puts handles on a piece, starting with rods of clay. With extra clay rods, he fills in the handles. He continues smoothing it with clay until he makes the round hold handle, which are trademarks of the region. Handles on pots with lids are done basically the same way, except the artisans have to incorporate the handle into the lip of the lid. In the making of the handles, the artisans show their true craftsmanship, fashioning the delicate handles from clumps of clay, making them sturdy enough to hold the pot and not detach takes true skill and patience. In a similar manner, the lids are fashioned from flattened clay discs over molds. The tops are scored in the center to where a clump of clay placed and slowly formed in the knob-shaped top handles, also signature traits of the region. When dry, other artisans then are in charge of further smoothing the surface. Another artist is then in charge of measuring and trimming each lid, specifically to each pot. A watery glaze is then made with water and red clay. After the pieces are successfully dry, this glaze is applied to the piece with a brush. The glaze will allow the pieces to be polished smooth later on. Before they are polished, the pieces are laid out in the sun to fully dry. Since it rains almost every day, the town has to be ready to go running and cover the drying pieces at any moment to make sure the day's worth of work is not ruined. The pieces are then ready for the most arduous part of the process, the polishing. With these smooth agate stones, the artisans have to continuously rub the outside of every piece. So much so, that they actually wear down the stones over time. 
On large pieces, it takes over an hour to polish the entire thing. Here you can see an artisan coaxing the shine on this piece. They can tell when they are polished, not only because of the shine, but when they are smooth enough to squeak. The final step of the process is the firing. To do that, the pieces are loaded in metal barrels. The barrels are then loaded one by one into wood-burning kilns. Some artisans now have gas kilns, which give them greater control over the temperature. The burnings are normally done in the evening, which makes the heat bearable. The firing process takes approximately three hours, with the kiln reaching approximately 750 degrees Celsius. After the firing comes probably the most interesting part of the entire process, and is what gives the piece their unique black color. The metal drums are pulled out of the oven with the help of long sticks. The drums and the clay pieces come out of the kiln white hot. Processed vegetable materials are then added to the metal drums, which immediately catch fire and begin to smoke. Drums are then covered to extinguish the flames, but keep the material smoking vigorously for quite some time. The smoke penetrates the pieces and gives the clay pieces the beautiful black finish that so characterizes products from La Chamba.